Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 12.4, which covers the normal distribution. This is our last unit in the statistics uh, section. Um, in the normal distribution, uh, some of you guys know have heard of the bell curve or seen pictures of the bell curve, and the no that's what the normal distribution is. Um, it's a really popular distribution in statistics that help us come up with percentiles and rankings and understand probabilities of certain events. Um, it's uh, really popular and uh, we're going to take a look at it now. So we're going to look at characteristics of the normal distributions and go through uh, basically the first six or so objectives. So the bell curve, or sorry, the normal distribution is also called the bell curve or Gaussian distribution, but mainly the bell curve, normal distribution. So the normal distribution is bell-shaped and symmetric about the vertical line through its center. The mean, median, and mode are all equal uh, when we have a normal distribution, are very, very close, and are located at the center of the distribution. So here, for example, there's a lot of real-life examples that, that are bell-shaped. So if we look at heights within a certain sex and a certain country, they're going to be very bell-shaped. Most people, most people are um, close to the average height, which is in the middle. And then we have an equal number, about, approximately equal number tailing off of tall people and short people. Now this is just showing what the bell curve starts to look like if we sample more and more people. So this is a sample of 100 men, sample size of more men, more and more and more and more until it's basically perfectly bell-shaped. And this is um, what we call the normal distribution, where this, the mean, median, and mode, but mainly the mean, is in the middle. And then there's equal number of people to the right of the, the mean and equal number of people to the left of the mean. Now notice, the higher the bell curve is, there's more more people or more data values in that area. So you'll see an equal tailing. There's not very many very tall people, just as there's not very many very short people. So the normal distribution uh, uh, depends on the mean and the standard deviation. The mean is always in the middle, and the standard deviation is what we went over in 12.3. Standard deviation measures spread. So the larger the standard deviation is, the more, uh, the more spread out or wider the bell curve is. So the one on the left has the smallest standard deviation, while the one on the right has the largest standard deviations. It's more spread out. The big thing that one of the big things we're going to ask you about the bell curve is uh, to use this 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So these percentages actually come from calculus, but um, we just have to remember these numbers. So approximately 68% of all data items or observations fall within one standard deviation of the mean. So that means from one standard deviation below to one standard deviation above. All these data values in this um, pink section are within one standard deviation of the mean. 68% of all the data values, that's, a pr that's over two thirds. So that's a pretty good majority of the data values are within one standard deviation of the mean. If we go out to two standard deviations of the mean, so two standard deviations here, two above to two below, 95% of all the data values are within two standard deviations of the mean. And that's a really good indicator to know like that very, pretty much the, nearly all of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So I would bet in a particular class that if I looked at people's heights, that nearly everyone's heights in the class would be within two standard deviations of the average height for their particular sex or uh, or culture, or what what uh, country they're from, so that's a big thing. And once you fall outside two standard deviations above the mean, then we start to look at you as like being uh, your height or your your score on a test as being unusual. When we stretch out to three standard deviations, we know that 99.7 percent of the data is within three standard deviations, and that's basically 100 percent, just everything but 0.3 percent. So if you go, if your height or your test score is more than three standard deviations above or below the mean, then you're very unusual. So for example, uh, male adult heights in North, North America are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 70 inches and a standard deviation of four inches. Find the height that is two standard deviations above the mean. So uh, 70 inches is the mean, standard deviation is four inches, so we wanna go two standard deviations above the mean. So that really means that we have to go two of the four inches above 70. So we'll do two times four, which is eight, and add that to 70, 78 inches. So the way that they're showing this here 
is that the mean is 70. If we go two standard deviations above, because the standard deviation is four, then the, the height that's two standard deviations above is 78. The height that's three standard deviations above is 82. And all these numbers are certain number of standard deviations either below or above the mean. It says, use the distribution of the male adult heights in the figure to find the percentage of men in North America with heights between 66 inches and 74 inches. Well, between 66 inches and 74 inches, both of those are one, this is one standard deviation below, and this is one standard deviation above. So the percentage between those, when we talk about one below to one above, from the rule, we know that 68% of all the heights are within one standard deviation of the mean. So the answer is 68%. So they're showing the work here. 68% uh, is the one standard deviation above. So if we go one below to one above, 68%. So you can either draw the picture, which I think is much easier than showing this work. Uh, Z-scores are a really important thing to determine how many standard deviations a particular data value is from the mean. It follows a pretty simple formula. You take the data item, you subtract the mean, and then you divide by the standard deviations. So we'll say generally data items above the mean have positive z-scores, while data items below the mean will have negative z-scores. And the data value when you're, or sorry, the z-score when you're equal to the mean is going to be zero because this, this uh, difference up here will be zero. So for instance, the mean weight of newborn infants is seven pounds and the standard deviation is 0.8 pounds. The weights of a newborn, uh, oh sorry, the weights of newborn infants are normally distributed so we can basically draw this bell curve, put seven in the middle, and then we can count by point eights and show one, two, three standard deviations above the mean and one, two, three standard deviations below the mean by subtracting point eight when we go to the left. It says find the z-score for a weight of nine pounds. So nine pounds, they show it visually somewhere between two and three standard deviations, but if you do the formula, so uh, the z-score for 9 is 9 minus the mean of 7 divided by 0 0.8, which is 2.5. So 2.5 means that the, a weight of 9 pounds is 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. In other words, a 9-pound infant is pretty um, unusual or something that to be like, whoa, that's a somewhat heavy baby. If we looked at a 6-pound infant and did the, the math, we could find that a uh, six pound infant is 1.25 standard deviations below the mean. So the z-score would be negative 1.25. Okay, no, they didn't show the work for six, okay. Um, understanding z-scores. So intelligent quotients, IQs, on the standard Stanford Binet intelligence test are normally distributed uh, with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 16. What is the IQ score cor corresponding to a z-score of negative 1.5? The negative sign in 1.5 tells us that the IQ is one and a half standard deviations below the mean. So the, the negative is telling us it's below. And z-scores represent a number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So if we take negative 1.5 times 16, or basically 1.5 times 16 and subtract it from 24, we get 76. Why are we taking it times 16? Because 16 is the value of the standard deviation. So this number tells us how many of those so how many of those, we multiply it and then take subtract it off because it's below the mean. So the IQ score corresponding to a z-score of negative 1.5 is 76. Percentiles and quartiles, this is just something we go over quickly. Percentiles represent, like sometimes you'll, if you have a child or if you remember going to the doctor when you were a kid, you'll see like your height or weight um, is in a certain percentile. And really what that means is uh, if you say your height is the 75th percentile, that means that there are 75% of the population is shorter than you. So a percentile always gives you the rank of the percentage of people that score below you on a test or they're shorter than you or way less than you. So that's what this is saying. If n percent of the data items in a distribution are less than a particular data item, then we say that the particular data item is in the nth percentile. So quartiles, all they do is just divide the data up into four uh, parts of 25 percent. So the first quartile is sometimes known as the 25th percentile, meaning that 25 percent of the data is below it. The second quartile, also known as the median, means that 50 percent of the data is below it. The third quartile, 
or the upper quartile is 75% of the data is below it. So, um, I don't think we're going to, oh, sorry, I should have erased that last slide. That's really all we're going to cover. Mainly, we got to know properties of the bell curve, that it's centered at the mean, and we can count off by the standard deviation, one, two, three, above and below, like we've done in this example. And then we can use this bell curve to estimate the percentages between uh, certain heights or weights or things like that. So good luck. We'll see you next time.